Let's take a look at how the measurement window works with an XRite I.O. table. You start off by selecting your measurement instrument and then pick the target you're going to use. We have several common targets built in. For now, we'll use the ID Alliance two-row control strip. I'll show you how the manual positioning works. I have a proof sheet that has this control strip on the bottom of the sheet. I'll place it on the I.O. table choose manual positioning and start. You show the software where the target is on the table by moving the measuring arm to the upper left corner patch and then the bottom left patch and the bottom right patch. You're not positioning the actual aperture but you're clicking these patches using the little clear plastic aiming bullseye on the side of the arm. Aim and hold it still while you click the button on the side of the i1 Pro instrument. After a second or so it will calibrate and then automatically find the side of the first row and swipe across. I'm sure most of these steps are familiar to those who have used an I.O. table with other software. But Chromix has added a few new time-saving features as we shall see. If you have a well-arranged target with large differences between patches, the I.O. should be able to measure these rows as easy as that. Let's see what this memory scan feature can do. You all who run a high production environment, pay attention to this. You start by setting the memory, telling the software where to find the location of the patches. If all of my press sheets have the control strip printed at the same spot on my sheets, I can make a jig or lay out a template on the table so I can place my targets in the same location every time I go to measure them. With my control strip on the bottom of my big sheet, it's easy to flip the sheet around and butt up against the bottom of the sheet with my template. Then I position the three corners as before. Of course, this is setting the location for all of your measurements going forward, so make sure you do a careful job of aligning this just right. You end up back at this dialog, and now the memory button has changed because it already has positions saved in memory. You may be wondering what I'm going to do about the target being upside down. Our measurement window has the ability to rotate the target orientation on the preview here. When you have a need to measure in a different orientation like this, you can do it now. So we'll rotate this upside down to match the way the table is going to measure it. It's important to note that the actual measurement file that comes out as a result of this is in its normal orientation. It's flipped back to its normal layout when it gets saved out. So any software that expects the normal orientation is going to get that. From now on, every time you measure one of these targets, all you have to do is go in here and hit start. The software automatically knows where to go and it goes straight to the measuring steps cutting time off the process and making the whole process a lot faster. Let's do one more using a two-page target. Notice you can use more targets than just the built-in ones. There's a target folder where you can place the target definition files that the software needs in order to do a preview and know how many rows and columns. We can even mix and match different reference files from different manufacturers. In this case, I have a two-page target that was originally made for the Barbieri LFP. The Barbieri reference files are in a zipped format. I'll copy and paste this two-page zipped file into the folder for the i1 Pro. Pick the target and manual positioning. Start. So, we can measure multiple page targets now. I'll speed the video up so we can get through this visual quicker. With an I.O. table, keep in mind that it helps to have your target scrambled or is arranged so that differences between patches are big enough to detect a difference. Otherwise, the I.O. will slow down and redo rows at a slower speed and might have to default to measuring patch by patch. At the end of each page, you get a confirmation that the page is complete and you're prompted to place the next page and do the corner aiming again. If you place the other pages in the same location as the first, you'll find that we remember where your first patch is, so there's another time saver. And you're off to the races again. At Chromix, we try to take advantage of every opportunity we can to make your measurements easy to do and quick. 
and at the same time maintain the high level of quality that Chromex is known for. Thanks for watching.